God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. For past programs of God's Pure Word of Faith, go to www.spreaker.com. That's Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. In the search box at the top of the page, enter my name, Richard Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N, and click on it. A picture with a cross and God's Pure Word of Faith, Richard Harden, will show up. Click on the picture of the cross a listing of all the past programs will then show up. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. God's Pure Word of Faith. I'm Richard Harden, and I'll be here with you for the next hour now. And today I'm going to be sharing with you about uh, prayer, praise, thanksgiving, and worship. But before I do that, I want to share with you about my website, and I'll be right back. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at raharden.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Welcome back. As I said, I'm going to be sharing today about Prayer, praise, thanks, and worship. And first, uh, about prayer. Prayer is just any form of communication with God. Now, from your mind, heart, songs, even in Isaiah 34, uh, 16, the scripture says, read you out of the book of the Lord. And just reading his word and, you know, letting him uh, speak through his word to us and had us and our prayer, praise, thanksgiving, and worship and everything. But I want to show you this morning just 
how much more important it is than than possibly you've thought about it in the past. Now, in John chapter 15, verse 7, the scripture says, uh, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So, it encourages us here to pray and ask. Uh, now, prayer includes both praise, worshiping uh, God, and, and thanksgiving. Prayer includes all of this, because see, all of these are a, a way or a form of us speaking or reaching out or doing something back to God. That is, when we praise Him, we're talking to Him and praising Him. And thanksgiving, we're talking to Him. And in our worship, we're worshiping to Him. So that's our communicating to God. So all of these are actually a form of prayer. But uh, but there's different aspects of them there. But he says, if, if, if we abide in Him, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now, see, God and His words are the same. Jesus' words were uh, the pure word of God because he didn't sin. He was speaking the pure word Christ from his heart. So that's why we need his words abiding in us because the living word is Christ, Christ in us, our hope of glory. It's Christ that comes into our heart. It's salvation and creates in us a new heart, a new life. But we must live abiding in him and allowing his living words to abide in us after we become a child of God as he asks us to do things in service or as he directs us to go different places or you know like teach a Sunday school class or preach or whatever he might ask us to do in service like that that's his words and they should be abiding in us you know in our uh, agreement in our heart if if we don't if we reject his words then we won't get our answers to prayer and i think in a lot of cases that may be what it is we're rejecting his words to forgive others um, to pray for those that despitefully use us and just so many things he that knoweth do good and doeth it not to him and his sin and and just on and on like this there's so many ways like this husband dwell with your wives according to knowledge being joint heirs of grace life as unto the weaker vessel lest your prayers be hindered see we can have a lot of things in there to where we aren't really walking daily and abiding in his word in some areas now first john 3:22 states that in a little bit different way it says, whatever we ask, we receive of him. We'll see up in the previous verse, John 15, 7, it says, uh, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Well, here it's saying the same thing, different words. In John, 1 John three twenty two, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So being pleasing in his sight then is, you know, the forgiving other people and, you know, being in right relationship with your family and your wives, your children and things like this and praying for those that despite for you use you and, and doing good to those that you see. See, that's what's pleasing to him as, as his children. He wants us to live and be that kind of person, you know, that he can use as his ambassador here on earth. Second Corinthians um, 520 says we're ambassadors for Christ. We pray you in Christ's stead. See, since Jesus is not here now, we pray you in his stead that you be reconciled to God. See, we're his ambassadors sharing that word now that Jesus shared when he was here. Or we should be sharing that pure word that Jesus shared, you know. Because if it's not his pure word, uh, God won't back us up. Like Proverbs 35 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure, a shield him, but her trust him. Add thou not to it, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So if we're not sharing God's pure word, we're not sharing Christ. We can be, you know, uh, if we add things to God's word, it, it changes and it loses the power because if, if, if it's not his pure word, it's not Christ that we're speaking and that's how we get reproved and found a liar because when we say something that uh, is from God and it's not and we've added to it or something then God won't back it up and it'll just be our words then with no power so we either speak God's pure word or our powerless word something like that now to praise the Lord I'm going to uh, I hope you'll get get this down inside you because it can change your life even as a Christian praise 
like what now this praise is like when you you know praise your kids and your grandkids and tell them how great they've done you know and just oh you, you did so good or you know like that was so that great what you did and you know how you performed in that little play or how you played that softball game or baseball game we, you know we praise them by specifically mentioning what they did now we can just say i praise you i praise you i praise you or like sometimes we sing a song in church saying, I will praise you, Lord, and praise you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. That, that's not really praising the Lord. It's talking about it and everything. But praising him is be specific. Lord, thank you for, man, even though my car broke down, that it broke down in the, in the driveway as I was coming home or, you know, something like this. Be specific in, in how the Lord you know, even takes care of us and, and lets things happen in opportune time. And, you know, he blesses us just so many times and we're not even aware of it till later. And then we say, oh, Lord, thank you for this. Be specific, you know, in your praise to the Lord and let him know, you know, instead of just saying, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Well, tell him what it is you're praising him for, you know. Now, listen to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 to 21. And now, Israel, what does the Lord require of thee? And you can say, now, you Christians, what does the Lord require of us? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord thy God with thy, all thy heart, with all thy soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day, for thy good. Now notice it says there, for thy good. And that uh, verse in 1 John 3, 22, while ago, it said, that Whatsoever we ask, we receive him, because we keep his commandments. So we should be obeying the laws and keeping his commandments as best we can. But we're not under the curse of the law now if we don't. But we should go back and ask forgiveness. And, and when we recognize we've broken one of God's laws or something, go back and ask his forgiveness, you know, like an obedient child and everything. Uh, but it says it's for our good these commandments are. Then, continuing in verse 14, Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens is the Lord thy God's, the earth also with all that is therein. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Now it says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Now this circumcising the skin of your heart, it's uh, discussed in Romans chapter 2, the last couple of verses, where it talks about that he is a Jew now. It is not one of, you know, just the the flesh but the one with the circumcised heart you know like that circumcision is not of the flesh now it's of the heart the spirit in our heart and he's even talking about this be no more stiff name for the lord your god is god of gods and the lord of lords a great god a mighty and a terrible with which regardeth not persons that means regardeth not persons he's not a respecter of persons uh, he respects faith he respects our acceptance and obedience to his word like king saul the first king of israel god picked him out as being the, he said the goodliest person in the whole land to be the king and just almost immediately after he became king he started disobeying god and disobeying his rules and things like this and god said it it, it repented him that he even picked saul because saul changed so much there and uh, he pulled his spirit from him well See, he didn't respect people because they're in positions of, you know, like leadership, a king or something like this, because he's the one that allows a person to get there. See, he's the one that put them there. And we have different uh, services. We each have a special holy calling, like, uh, what is it, Second uh, Timothy 1, nine. He saved us and called us to a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace created in Christ Jesus for the world again. Now, that means that we're going to all be in different positions. Some in positions of service, you might say, here on earth, it'd look like they do a higher level or lower level or whatever. But see, if we are in that special holy calling, well, it's even like a John the Baptist. He didn't raise anybody from the dead. He didn't do miracles, didn't do all this. But Jesus said that uh, there was none greater of women in the Old Testament than John the Baptist. Because, see, he fulfilled and did exactly what his holy calling was. That was to um, introduce the coming of the Lord, introduce the coming of the Messiah. And he did that, see. So 
it said that there was none greater than the Old Testament. And some of them, you know, raised people from the dead. Some of them performed, uh, God worked through them, performed miracles and all this. But John the Baptist fulfilled his holy calling. And Jesus said that is what counts for John the Baptist. Not, you know, what somebody else did. And they did more miracles or something like this and everything. Uh, God doesn't compare us to others because he puts us where he wants us. And that's what he wants us to do. Now, it says he doesn't take reward. That is, uh, uh, you know, you can't buy the Lord off. You can't, you know, uh, bribe in some kind of way like that to, to get out of doing something or to get your sins covered. No, you know, uh, uh, God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't take reward. He, do, he, ex, he does execute judgment of the fatherless and wither and loveth a stranger and giving them food and raiment. He wants us to be like that in taking care of the poor. And love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shall I serve, and him shall I cleave. Swear by his name. Now listen to this, verse 20. He is thy praise. Now that's what I want to get to here. He is thy praise, and he is thy God. He has done thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Now, but he said, he is our praise. God is our praise. See, when we're speaking praise to God, we're speaking the pure word of Christ back to God. And God and his word are one and the same. So it's like we're speaking God back to God. Because John chapter 1 says, the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. So certainly when we're speaking uh, pure praise to God for things he's done for us, See, that's a pure word coming out of our mouth. And that pure word is Christ from our heart. It's like speaking God through us back to God and everything. He is thy praise. That's what it's talking about here in Deuteronomy. But now listen in Jeremiah 17, 14. It says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. See, we're speaking God's pure word back. And here, even then, when they were uh, praising God then, that was Christ speaking through them back to God, the pure word of God. So if you want to get in God's presence, start speaking praise to God. Be specific. Think of these testimonies and everything back in your past. And, and speak them back to God and thank him for them. See, now that's where the thanks comes in from our praise. We're, we're praising him for how great his works were in our life, how, how he helped us overcome that difficulty and all these things, how great you were, God. You did such a good thing. You know, like if your grandkids did something just really pleased you, you just tell them how great they are and, and what they did and, you know, you're really doing good and, you know, something like this. You would just brag on them so much and everything. Well, brag on God when you're doing it. It's, it's his living word coming out of you then back to him. And in First uh, Corinthians one twenty four, it says, "Christ, the living Word, is the power of God." So it's like it's almost like Christ, the living Word, power coming out of your mouth back when you're offering praise and everything. And in First, uh, let's say Second Chronicles chapter uh, twenty, verse twenty two, it says, "When Jehoshaphat and them were surrounded by three armies, and they feared, set themselves to seek the Lord, and God spoke to them, said, It's not your battle; it's mine. Go set yourself in the valley of Ziz, and see the victory.'" Well, in verse 22, the next morning when they got up to go out, it said in verse 22, let me read it to you here real quick. And when they began to sing and to praise, see, singing, making melody in heart to the Lord and praising God's word, the living word coming out of their mouths and, and praise and, and shout like that. As they were going out, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and so on. When they began to sing and to praise, see, praise, it was God's pure word coming out of their mouth, pure word of praise to him. Christ, the power of God, coming out of their mouths like that, started the beginning of the victory that God was going to fight. Christ fought for them, and all three of the armies killed each other to the last man. You know, so uh, when they began to sing and to praise, then God set ambushments. Now, he'll set ambushments against your problems, too, when you start singing and praising. Listen in Psalms 22, 3. But thou art holy. O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. See, three times now here, it is said that God 
inhabits our praises. When we're praising him, it, it's him in us, coming out of us, sharing that praise audibly. I hope you get what I'm, I'm saying here. It's not just us, uh, sh you know, just saying, oh, Lord, I thank you for healing me. Lord, I thank you for this and this. You know, when we're doing that and we're thanking him back like that and we're sharing that, uh, being specific about the things that we're thanking him for, I thank you for, you know, uh, taking care of that problem at work. I thank you for this, you know, and like that and working in such a way and everything. See, that that's a pure word of God then. And he knows it because he was there. He did it, see. And when you're speaking that pure word back to him, giving him thanks and praise and everything, that's his living word through you, from your heart, through your mouth, out in the audible, you know, <laughs> sound and everything. And that's Christ. Christ, the living word. It says, in the, even back in the Old Testament, there, verse 21 there in Deuteronomy 10, he is thy praise. When you're praising him, that is God. Him and his word are one and the same. Jeremiah 17, 14. And it says, for thou art my praise. When you're praising God, it, it's, it's God speaking to you then. And, and that's where the power comes for healing. Get a good praise song or something like that. If you're feeling bad today and you're sick or something like this, and get in there and start praising the Lord and everything, and God's presence will come. And where the presence of the Lord is, there's healings. There's been many times when I'd get sick, and I'd go into my den, and I'd get those praise songs out, and i start praising God and singing and worshiping and praising Him. And, and, you know, just many times I've gone in there sick and come out well. Because with the Spirit of the Lord is, there's going to be health and healing and things like this. Now, you, you don't just do it to be, you know, just say the words and everything. It's got to be pure from your heart to God. And, and and no time limit set on it, you know. You just go in there to praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord and just fellowship with Him. Psalms 22, 3 again, Thou inhabits the praises of the people. Now, and that's Christ coming through us. Like Christ, well, Hebrews eleven twenty six, where it's talking about... Um, in the Old Testament, in God speaking to Moses, it says, Moses esteemed the riches of Christ greater than all the wealth of Egypt. See, Christ is God's living spoken word. It says in 1 Corinthians one twenty four, it says, you know, Christ, the power of God, the creative power of God, but Christ, the power of God and wisdom of God, wisdom, the pure spoken word of God, the wisdom of God is Christ, the living word. And Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in us, our hope of glory. And Romans 8 9 says, Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So we're born into the family of God. Like, uh, what is it? Galatians 4, 6, and 7. Um, uh, and because your sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Daddy, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. If a son, then heir of God through Christ. We're born into the family of God when the spirit of his son, Christ, comes into our heart. His living words. And um, that's what Jesus was talking about. You must be born again. We must be born into the family of God by the seed of God, which is the living word of God. Like the seed of God, when the angel spoke to Mary, she conceived. That seed was put in her by the angel speaking to her, the living word of God. And she was receptive. And she said, be it as thou said. You know, even though she didn't understand what all was going to happen, she said, be it unto me, even as thou hast said. And so uh, the living word of God speaking to Moses. Well, that living word of God, see, we can we can be a factor in in causing God's presence in our presence if we'll just count our blessings and thank him and praise him and, and the praise can you know bring you into the presence well because the praise is Christ in you coming out as you speak now that's not a, a just a philosophy or something like that it's it's the true word of God three times here it says that uh, God inhabits our praise God is in our praise it is him because we're speaking his pure word. And when we speak his pure word, that's Christ in us coming out in praise to the Father.
see so so get that down in a day get some praise music if you don't have praise music just you know think of some chorus that's saying Jesus 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 or what a friend we have in Jesus oh oh Lord my God how great thou art you know something like that just start worshiping and praising the Lord until you can get some pretty music like that and everything to help lead you and guide you into that worship of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there's healing in the presence of the Lord is whatever you need Praise the Lord, I tell you. Now we'll be right back with uh, Thanksgiving and worship in just a minute, but we, we'll take a short break. God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern, and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rails. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on k 98 Talk. Com. Visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at rahardin.com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit amazon.com backslash kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. You know, this is exciting because I believe some of you listeners are going to actually start praising the Lord today after hearing this message, and things are going to happen in your life that wouldn't have happened unless you start doing it. See, because we've got to be the mouthpiece for the Lord sometimes and praise them. Listen to Thanksgiving now. Thanksgiving, just simply count your blessings. Name them one by one. And thank the Lord Jesus Christ and God for what they've done. You know, count your blessings and thank them for what they've done. And as you're doing that, that's going to be a part of praise then that's going to help, you know, um, get your situation changed in your life, whatever they are. Because as you truly come into the Lord with a grateful heart, listen to this scripture here <clears throat> to help get you prepared for this now. Ephesians 5, 17, 18. Excuse me, 5, 17 through 20. It says, don't be unwise. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with wine, worn in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be happy and joyful in the Lord and the Spirit, you know. You don't have to have wine and stuff to do it. 
speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, if you don't have any music like I've said a while ago, or you don't have any songs like that, just flip open your Bible in the book of Psalms, like Psalms chapter 19. It's got some great verses there on God's Word. Start singing them because there's a little chorus using them. Uh, psalms 100, Psalms 34. You know, just, just start singing those words because, see, they're God's Word. Just start singing His words back to Him, you know. It just... You can find something to do to start, you know, praising and singing the Lord. I mean, singing for, before the Lord. But here it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when it says for all things, it's talking about for all things God's done for you. It's, it's not talking about all things that happen around here. You know, you run up to somebody and they're, and they're cursing, use the Lord's name in vain. You don't give thanks for them cursing, use the Lord's name in vain. Now, you can possibly give thanks that God allowed you to be in that position so you could be a witness to them and help them or something like that, but not for what they're doing, not evil things that are happening. It's saying here, um, giving thanks always for all things unto God, for what, you know, and then it's, it's talking about for what God has done for you here. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 16 through 23. Rejoice evermore. Now rejoice, see, like it's up here. Singing spiritual songs, hymns, and singing, make melody heart to the Lord. And then that's in verse 16 there. Um, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing, or be in communication with God without ceasing. You know, it's just uh, you don't have to be just you know like oh holy God, you know praying, you know with your hands folded and your eyes closed and bowed head. But as you go through life, you see somebody when when uh, when I first met my wife, we she mentioned to me one time that when a siren a emergency vehicle was going by, she said uh, we need to pray for them every time that. One of them comes by, pray for them to be able to help the person they're going to try to help and be able to do a good job and everything, and pray for the person they're going to help, that the person will get the proper help that they need. And that's been part of our life now ever since then, is to pray for mercy vehicles, you know, police too, and others. They go by and what they're going through. But have things in your life like that. Pray without ceasing throughout the day. Now it says, in everything give thanks. See, while I go, I was saying, you don't pray for to be around somebody that's cursing and doing this or doing something bad, but you can give thanks that God has counted you worthy enough to be there to possibly be a good testimony to the people during that time, see, because uh, he wants us to, you know, bless those that despitefully use us and pray for those that curse us and things like this, you know, cheat us and things. He wants us to be there when those things are happening, but we don't you know, like his give thanks for what's happening, but we can give thanks that the Lord counts us worthy and will allow us to be there to maybe be a blessing to them and help draw them out of that. Now, so it says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quince not the Spirit. That is, when the Spirit tries to get you to speak up in those times, don't quench the Spirit and, and, and let the devil cause you to be fearful and, and not speak up or something like that. You know, just pray and ask the Lord to help you get the conversation around to where you can speak up and share in a, a good, you know, hopefully pleasing manner and everything. But it says then, you know, after uh, and everything, give thanks to the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, quench not the spirit. Don't, don't snuff him out inside. I know what it's happened to me too. So there's been times that, uh, I was kind of, you know, wrestling with speaking up or, you know, I was thinking about speaking up and like that. And then later, as I'd walk away or something, I would know, oh, in my heart, God would be telling me. And I, I felt so bad. You know, he didn't, when when he convicts us of doing something like that, he doesn't tell us, you know, like like the devil. Now, guilt and conviction is different. If if the devil's going to jump on you and everything, he's going to tell you how bad you are, what a lousy person you are, and, you know, this and this and this, and you didn't do this and so on. But when God convicts us of, of missing an opportunity to witness like that, it's just that you know, it's a sadness in your heart because Jesus did so much for us. And I feel so sad then that I know I let him down. I said, oh, Lord, please forgive me. Help me next time. I'll, I'll do it. See, So it, the conviction is from a sadness of not, you know, just some reason of speaking up for our Lord and Savior that's done so much for us. And uh, 
And that just happens sometimes. It happens sometimes, like speaking in church. Uh, the Lord wanted me to speak up and say something one night, and I didn't. And I wasn't sure because everybody else was saying almost the opposite. But then I know it was, though. So after I, I left that night, I just, Lord, please forgive me because, see, I needed to speak up and say the truth. And that's what he wanted me to do. And I, Anyway, uh, quench not the spirit when you're in situations like that. And you know the Lord wants you to speak up. And then it says, despise not prophesying. Now, despising not prophesying means, you know, prophecy is a testimony of Jesus. It says in the scripture that, you know, uh, uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy in Revelations. And, um, and that's what it is. So the spirit of prophecy, speaking up and sharing what Jesus has done for us in these situations, is a form of prophecy, prophesying. Then it says prove all things. Now, prove all things uh, in situation. You know, we compare them like in, what is it, Second Corinthians 10, 5, excuse me, or 5, 10. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it right backwards. But anyway, where it says submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, we should have enough of God's word in us that when things happen like that, that then the Holy Spirit, Christ in us, can can come forth that, you know, that living word in us can come forth into our minds and and let us know what we need to do and what we need to say as best we can. But see, if we don't have a lot of God's word in us like that, just becoming a Christian and receiving Christ in our heart for salvation is not the answer for us. It's the beginning. It's not the final answer. It's the beginning. Then we start growing and receiving more of God's word, Christ in us, more of the living word in us. And then as we walk daily like that, when things happen, he brings those scriptures, the living word to us for us then to react in the proper way. But he can't bring them back to our memory if we've never allowed him to put them in there first to store them in our memory. So rejoice evermore. You know, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Pray without ceasing. That's communicating with the Lord, either in prayer, or praise, or something like that as you go throughout your day. In everything, give thanks. That is, count your blessings. Name them one by one. And, you know, count back on the many things that God has done for you. Testimonies of answers to prayer. Testimonies of healings and things like this. Blessing your loved ones, your children, protecting them, things like this. Count your blessings and, and thank him for it, you know, like that. Praise him for it. Then uh, it says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Don't, you know, quench his spirit when he tries to get, you know, to speak up, maybe uh, do something in front of people and say something, you know, like that. Uh, speak up and share the testimony of what Jesus has done for you in your heart and life. Despise not prophesying, you know, that is sharing the testimony of Jesus. Um, and prove all things that is submitting every thought to the obedience of Christ now and he goes on to say then abstain from all appearance of evil and the very well in, abstain from all appearance of evil the apostle Paul said one time there was a big discussion going on about uh, you shouldn't eat meat of sacrifice to you know um, false gods and stuff like that and everything and uh, the apostle Paul said you know I know that you know these false gods and all that stuff not real it's just you know it's just meat like any other meat and it didn't bother him to eat it but he said if it offend anyone else i will not even eat that meat because he didn't want to be an offense to anyone that might you know uh, appear to be bad to that person and him then be a stumbling block to them and their walk with the lord and and i can you know remember i can remember back in the 50s or something like this I would hear a lot in our church you know like that uh, you know have people take tours church groups take tours different places across the country and everything well down south where I grew up and everything like that uh, the boys and girls didn't go swimming together at church camps, things like this. The girls will go swimming and the boys will go swimming and things like this you know uh, um, but you take groups in those days that would come from California and other places like that, or uh, and and they had all in down south. It was called in church mixed bathing. It wasn't called swimming. It was called mixed bathing. And see, so this is kind of like what the Apostle Paul said. You know, groups coming from outside that that might 
you know, be offensive and doing things to be offensive, you know, whether this way or that way, Paul said he wouldn't even eat meat, you know, that was burnt and sacrificed to idols, if it would be an offense to someone else. So he was so concerned about reaching people for the Lord. In fact, one time he said, uh, you know, that his concern was for you and Christ Jesus. You know, uh, it's Christ Jesus in your heart. He didn't care when he went to visit a church or something, who donated the carpet, who donated the pews and all this stuff like that. All he wanted to know when he met somebody was Christ Jesus and them, their relationship there in your heart. Or do you have a, you're a child of God. Do you have Christ in your heart? So uh, Thanksgiving, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ and God for all that they have done. Now, uh, in these two verses here, well, two sections of scriptures, Ephesians, can help you get started. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, make melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks, count your blessing, giving thanks always for all things God has done for you and everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, so we have prayer is, you know, communi communicating with God in any way, whether you're praising Him or you're just thanking Him, you know, Thanksgiving or something like this. But now in worship, that is a little bit different here. In worship, now this is just telling God how great He is. Like, uh, oh, you know, you can tell your grandkids sometimes, oh, you're the greatest, you know, like that. You know, when they three and four years old and they do something so cute and so sweet like that you just let them know they're the greatest man and you know just see the sparkle in their eyes when they hear you say things like that and everything well that's but god you know he wants to get the sparkle too of, of his children loving him and thanking him enough like that his great works how great he is his works how awesome his works are his creation things like this uh, a lot of the you know the worship is um He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy in all these things. Like it says in, I think it's chapter 5 in um, Revelation, said who was, no one was found worthy to open the book of life or open the book of uh, something like this, this small book it's talking about there. Well, and it goes down, they search Sue out, and they said the lamb was worthy, the, the slain lamb of God, you know, and it, Jesus was found worthy to open it. Now, and something like that now. So God is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our... And, and to give him reverence, you know, not just the, the old man upstairs, something like that. You know, don't speak about God like that. Give him reverence and devotion. Honor, honor him. Your love, your admiration for him, your adoration for him. Prayer and praise, thanks. All of that is a part of our worshiping God as we come before him. Now, I'm going to read you from the concordance real quick. I don't have time to read all these scriptures. But just to show you what it says in here about uh, worship. Now, when the concordance it lists all the words that are in the Bible, and uh, so you can study them and everything, and all these have to do with worship. And it lists a few words before and a few words after, so you can kind of tell how the word is used in that particular scripture. And here's one in uh, Joshua, it says, uh, 5.14, On his face to the earth, he fell on his face to the earth and did worship God. And out here, O come, let us worship and bow down to God. And um, and uh, Psalm says, Worship our God, and let's see, and worship at his holy hill. I will worship toward thy holy temple. So worship the Lord in his holy mountain. Come to worship in the Lord's house. You know, we have a lot of Lord's houses around now. It says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And another, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Thou shalt worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. First um, Chronicles 14, it says um, that He fell down on His face to worship God. And then uh, in Revelations, uh, and I fell at his feet and worshipped him. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy, which I was talking about a while ago. The spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus. Then uh, in First Chronicles again, they they fell down on their heads and worshipped the Lord. And, you know, anyway, and worship and praise the Lord. 
they fell down upon the ground and worshiped the Lord. And then a mother came and fell down before Jesus and worshiped him in Matthew. And then there came a leper crying out to Jesus and worshiped him. A certain ruler came and worshiped him. Now here's a ruler that came and worshiped him. And this ruler is going to be telling him how great he is, you know, and the great things he's done and stuff like this. They, to be worshiping Jesus like that. In Matthew 5, they saw Jesus afar off, and he ran and worshiped him, bowing their knees to worship him. And God said in, I think it's Isaiah, that uh, every knee should bow to him, every tongue confess that he is Lord. Well, then he's... Uh, lifted Jesus up and exalted him to the fullness of Godhead bodily and he says and now that every knee shall bow to Jesus and worship him as Lord and if you don't bow here on earth if you don't humble yourself to God's word here and receive uh, Christ into your heart you're going to be forced to later so everybody is going to bow their knee to Jesus he's the king now you can either do it here and receive eternal life or you can do it later and receive eternal well, damnation, I guess, in the lake of fire or something like that. So it's it's your choice and when you want to bow the knee to God. And then uh, they fell upon their faces and worshiped God and just own like this. And uh, true worship is worship of the Father. Now, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, I mentioned a while ago that uh, they accepted God's word that when he told them that, uh, you know, it's not your battle, it's mine. They accepted his word. And what they did then, they all fell before the Lord and worshiped the Lord for his word, thanking him for his word. Now here they're surrounded by three armies, and they're fearful. So they set themselves to seek the Lord. And then God comes and tells them, say, hey, is my battle not yours? You just go set yourself out there and watch a victory. Can you imagine uh, somebody walking out before three armies, no weapon, just singing and praising the Lord uh, today, telling, you know, our Department of Defense that we need to do that with ISIS or something like that? Just march out before him, you know, praising the Lord. See, now that's how serious it was in Jehoshaphat's day. That's how serious it was to all of the people there with him. But they recognized and accepted that as a word from God that it was his battle, not theirs, and they were going to do it. They trusted God enough. See, that's the difference between trust and faith. They trusted God enough to accept his word to faith, and they marched out of the gates in faith. See? Acceptance and obedience to his word. And they trusted him enough to accept his word to faith. And then he performed the victory. Man, that'd be something today to march out in front of, you know, a, a group of ISIS coming and everything like that. And uh, let God perform the victory. But it was life or death for them. Because if they had marched out of those gates and they would got killed, those three armies would have went in then, killed their wives and children, taken everything. Or they might have taken them as slaves or no telling what they might have done. But here it says in Second Chronicles 20:18, they Jehoshaphat and the rest of the people fell before the Lord and worshipped the Lord, you know, just counting their blessings and, and you know, so on like this. Um, the Lord is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Now, so uh, today, do something like that for yourself. And the greatest thing you can do today is start counting your blessings. Like I said, name them one by one. Take anything that's in your situation. Well, in, what is it? Uh, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, or be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Now, these are all forms of prayer, like I said earlier, because when you're praising God, see that you're communicating with Him. That's what prayer is, communicating. When you're counting your blessings and thanking God, you're communicating with Him. When you're worshiping Him, you're communicating with Him. So all of these are included in prayer. But there's other prayers too, a petition. Like if you have a need, but, but don't just all the time go begging about your needs or something like this. And it, it's so easy to do probably because so many of us have you know, so many different needs and our family have so many needs and things. But um, start including the prayer and praise and, and worship in your time that you're going to be... Um, you know, your supplications and things like this. Be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. See, um, be anxious. For when you start getting anxious about something, that's when to take it to the Lord in prayer. That's when to count your blessings and think back on and praise Him for what He's done in the past. And I know you're going to take care of me this time, Lord. I know because there's nothing, you know, impossible for you. There's nothing 
too great for you to do and I know you're going to do it again see and just you know praise him and, and come out with those testimonies specific things that God has done you know back in the past like this and everything and then uh, try to well it, it's it's difficult to do sometimes but it, it it gets easier like that. We need to, you know, be spending more time in worship and praising God. I, I remember back in many times in my life where I was doing that so much and then got so busy that I slacked off and, and, and you're back and forth like this and everything. You know, you get so busy that you, you don't have time to spend that time like that. But make time today to count your blessings, praise the Lord, and thank Him for them, worship Him, and uh, get some scriptures out of the Bible and sing them to him or something, okay? Sing them to him. What well, it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, make melody in your heart to the Lord. That's like um, a farmer plows up his field to get the ground prepared and soft and ready and everything to receive the seeds. Well, we're going to be receiving the seeds of God's word when we plow up the ground of our heart, you know, like that, singing and make melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that is so great then like he said if you abide in me and my words abide in you you know we've been singing praises and singing his name and giving thanks and counting his blessings and his words abiding in us you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you and then whatsoever we ask we receive him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight and it says in Zephaniah that the Lord joys and rejoices over his people and, and I'm certain when you know he you start singing and well he might rejoice on some of us you know because he might be laughing at our singing but anyway no he wouldn't laugh at our singing it's a joyful noise to the Lord regardless of how we sound if we're doing it from our heart to worship and praise the Lord but uh, he says, whatever we ask, we receive him because we keep his commandments and now and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So, you know, giving to the poor, praying for those that despitefully use us. And, you know, um, in our relationships, you know, do the best we can. You know, like that, to stay in peace with all men as best we can, it says. But then in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 10, 11, forgive others lest you give Satan the advantage. See, these are the things that are pleasing in our walk with him and everything. But we need to build up, you know, that joy in, that, uh, in our heart and joy of the Lord and, you know, counting his blessings. And his praise is him in us. So if, let's get in the presence of the Lord today and truly, you know, uh, praise him and thank him. And and I, I, th I think many, many of you will be changed. I know it. it it changes me when I set aside that time and I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do that um, and not just tell you all to do it, but I'm going to and, um, because it is so great to be in the presence of the Lord and to know it. Now, if any of you out there have not received Christ in your heart, what I mean by that is not just joining the church, going to church or something like that, but I mean, I did that at age nine. I you know, they told me that what the preacher was going to ask, and I told them I love the Lord, I want to get saved, and all this, and got baptized. But at age 33, when I my problems in life got so bad and everything, I just my couch one morning, early one morning, uh, after a good long talk, uh, I got on my knees and said, Lord, if you're really real, like that Bible says, please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and show me. I, you know, I want I want to know that it's you. I don't I don't want what I've had before. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to go on good feelings, and I'm not going to change anything until I know it's you. I want to know you're real, you know, in a way that six months from now somebody can't tell me that I just had an emotional experience or something. I want to know you, you know, like you had relationship with people in the Bible. I want relationship. I want a relationship like that with you too. And uh, I was so doubtful then, after being so religious in all those years and everything, that I wasn't even sure God was real or something. I said, if you are, I'll be, do the best I can to serve you. Now, you know, I've naturally failed my end of the bargain and everything like that, but he hasn't failed me. But anyway, now, so I want you to do that too. Uh, in fact, I've met several people lately that uh, didn't even, doesn't, don't believe that there's a God or something like that. I said, I'll tell you what, if you'll be open-minded and like the 
game used to be 20 questions where you ask somebody something they act out to uh, some person or something and you got 20 questions to ask them they got to answer it honestly and uh, and you try to guess what they're representing well I told them I said play 20 questions with God from honesty of your heart just reach out to God and say okay God if you really are real and then pray your heart's concerns and everything and God will be working with you but I tell you anybody that will open you know, their heart completely to the Lord like that and say Lord please show me come into my heart you know, and forgive me if you haven't done that you can even do it right now with just a simple prayer saying Lord Jesus please forgive me of my sins come into my heart and create in me the new heart the new life and I commit my life to you and you'll never regret it and this will be the greatest day in Ezekiel 36 26 says God says, a new heart also will give you, a new spirit will I put within you. I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I'll give you a heart of flesh, and I'll put my spirit in you. See, it's more than just uh, deciding we're going to start trying to live good. He takes all those sins away and forgives and forgets them, gives us a clean heart without all those sins and everything, without the lust and without the hate, without the jealousies and unforgiveness and all that stuff we've had in our heart. He erases all that then gives us a clean new heart to start living for him and then he puts his spirit in us and we become a child of God so we're not the same person we were before we prayed we're actually now children of God with the spirit of God spirit of Christ in our hearts and Romans 8 9 says now if any man have not the spirit of Christ he is none of his so see just just becoming uh, a good person or trying to become a good person and living a good life and going to church some, and you pick out a religion that kind of you know makes you feel good and go that that's not it it's receiving the living Christ Christ in our heart Colossians 127 Christ in us our hope of glory and, um... God's pure word of faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central 8 Eastern and on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord, right here on K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. For past programs of God's Pure Word of Faith, go to www.spreaker.com. That's Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. In the search box at the top of the page, enter my name, Richard Harden, H-A-R-D-I-N, and click on it. A picture with a cross and God's pure word of faith, Richard Harden, will show up. Click on the picture of the cross. A listing of all the past programs will then show up. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we're expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on k 98 talk. Dot com.
visit Richard's website at raharden.com. That's the World Wide Web at R-A-H-A-R-D-I-N dot com. At his website, you can see a summary of the six books he has written, where purchases may be made. He also has a link to 18 videos on YouTube and several blogs about Christian beliefs. If you prefer, visit Amazon.com backslash Kindle and type in Richard Harden to see and purchase his books.